Hey, you're listening to Marketing Out Loud, a daily podcast where I share advice, stories, and insights to help you build a thriving consulting or professional services practice. To subscribe to the show, head over to marketingoutloud.fm. I was at the public library over the weekend with my kids, and I rediscovered that the public library is like the best place in the world. They have all these books. They're free of charge. You can borrow them, take them home. And as long as you bring them back on time, nobody gets angry. (laughs) It's amazing. And so I'm looking through some of the new releases and obviously the marketing books catch my eye. And I see this book called All About Them. Grow Your Business by Focusing on Others by a guy named Bruce Turkle. Never heard of it, and it's rare for me to have not heard of a marketing book, so it caught my attention. Started flipping through it, and I read the the introduction, and I wanted to share the story that the author shares in the introduction with you. He tells a story of how he had written his previous book before this one, and he was invited to a design conference to uh, to launch the book and do some book signings. And so he tells the story of when he went to that conference and how he felt. And, you know, he's got a successful agency at this point and things are going really, really well for him professionally, personally across the board. Come to this conference. First thing he does is attends um, some kind of a gala they have at the beginning of the conference. And he's seated next to another guy who's also doing a book launch at a book signing. He's a very famous designer. He's seated next to all these executives at very large companies. And he's given like the VIP treatment. So he's feeling like a total rock star on top of the world. VIP treatment, book signing, major industry conference, rubbing shoulders with the who's who. I mean, everything's just amazing. And then the next day. He, uh, you know, he gets ready to go to the book signing and, you know, he goes down to the convention hall and he's got his little daughter with him and, you know, he walks up to the hall and there's this massive lineup of people waiting for the book signings and it's him and the other guy. And, you know, he's like, wow, this is amazing. They're all lining up to, to, to get my book signed. Uh, you know, this is, this feels great. You know, he's again on top of the world. Everything is just as it should be. And so he walks into the convention hall and he goes from the back so he can get behind his table and, 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 and sit, sit behind the table. And when he finally gets to the table, what he realizes is that the entire lineup of people was there for the other guy's book. Not a single person was in line to get his book signed. They were there to get the other guy's book signed. And so, you know, he tells this story as kind of a, a turning point in his career. It's like it was like the moment that he realized that it's not about him. It's all about them. It's about the customers, about the readers, about the viewers, about the users, about the audience. And hence the title of the book, All About Them. Now, I haven't gotten past the introduction, uh, but but that story itself, I think uh, it really hit me. And I think if we look hard enough, we can all see ourselves in this story because our egos are designed to take in the cues that make us feel good, that make us feel better about ourselves, that raise our self-esteem. Uh, and and pretty much ignore any evidence to the contrary, right? This is like this is the ego using uh, our our brain's confirmation bias to its advantage. Anything that makes us feel good about ourselves, we accept with open arms. We take it in. We not only take it in, but we amplify that uh, to make ourselves feel larger than life. And anything that indicates maybe we're not larger than life, or that humbles us or brings us back down to earth, we minimize. And you know, I think if you look hard enough at your life, you know, you may not have had a, a situation as dramatic as the one that the author had, where he walks into a conference hall and nobody has lined up to look at his book or to get his book signed. They're all lined up for the other guy. I mean, that's extreme. But I think if you look hard enough, you will see smaller examples of this happening in your life where your ego plays tricks on you, right? Your ego makes you feel like things are a certain way, but in reality, from the perspective of other people, they're not like that at all. So I think the lesson that I'm taking away from this, and that I hope you do as well, is whenever you do anything, always ask yourself the following questions. Who is this for? Why am I doing it? And how is it helping people? Because if you find that you're doing something, and honestly ask yourself these questions, I mean, don't don't just fake it. But if you honestly ask yourself these questions and you find that it's not really for other people, it's more for you and you're really doing it just to make yourself feel better and to boost your own ego. And it really doesn't truly help other people apart from yourself, then you probably shouldn't do it. 
But if you ask those questions honestly and you do find that, yeah, you know, this is for somebody else, this is for my audience or my clients or the people that I serve, and I'm doing it because I feel like they have a problem that I can solve and I want to help them solve it, and here's how it helps them. And if you truly honestly come to the conclusion that it's for other people, then I think you've got something that really, really has legs. And there's so many examples of this, you know, and you can think about your own your, your own life and, you know, professionally, personally, that when you've done things that were really, even if you fooled yourself into thinking they were for other people, but they're really about yourself and for your own ego and to make yourself look good, those things never really last. Those things, you know, there may be a little bit of a blip of attention, but eventually they crash and burn and they don't sustain themselves. But the things that you do for other people, those projects are always the ones that, that sustain and that last and that make it for the long haul. Hey, thanks for listening. Do me a favor. If you like what you hear, go on iTunes and leave us a rating and a review because it helps more people discover the show. Thanks so much.